We're talking about takers in this part of the world, and of course we should. But the best way to kill the tanker is to kill the Enbridge product project in the first place. It's like killing a snake. If you get its head, the game's over. And that's what we have to do. And there's one thing I want everyone in this room tonight to promise. Never again use the word risk. We're not talking about risks, we're talking about certainties. Absolute dead certainties. We have this company, Enbridge, which since 1998 has had 811 spills. One of their spills in Kalamazoo, Michigan, was in July of 2010. They're still pretending to clean it up, but it can't be cleaned up. And that's the other thing I want you to all promise. Always make that point. Don't talk to us about money for cleanup because we know you can't clean it up. If you think for one second that a company with 811 spills in the last few years is going to put a pipeline over 1,100 kilometers of Rockies, Coast Range, valleys, rivers, without having any spills, then I've got a bridge in Vancouver I have for sale. I'll be glad to give you, talk to you about it after the show. The, pro, the, fir, the first thing we remember, it's a certainty. The second thing, and I think this is something that Enbridge is trying to tell everybody, it isn't only that they can't clean these things up. They can't even get there in the first place. This isn't Kalamazoo, Michigan. We're talking about going into the Rocky Mountains. What, with a helicopter with two or three guys and a shovel? Even if they could get heavy equipment in there, there's not a damn thing they could do. If that pipeline goes through, it is a death sentence for all of us and for all what we love. We've got to stop it there. Now let's talk about tankers. Well, they say, uh, well, you're not going to have any tanker crashes, all the things we're going to do. How could that possibly happen? Well, I guess it can happen the same way a cruiser ship in broad daylight went up on the grounds near Italy and sank and killed some 29 people. For God's sake, if a cruise ship, with all the skills their masters have and so on, if they can bust up in the middle of the night, you can be sure they're going to be tankers busting up in the middle of the end of the daytime down the coast. Again, this is a certainty. And when they tell you that they have double hulls now, let me give you a couple of examples of double hulls. In May of 2010, the double hull tanker Bunga Kalana spilled 2.9 million liters of crude and lower into the waters after Singapore after being hit by a freighter. A freighter. January 2010, double hull uh, tanker Eagle Otome spilled 1.7 million liters of crude oil at Port Arthur, Texas after colliding with a barge. In 1992, a double hull carrier, a GMC, broke apart after running aground and spilled 76 million liters of crude into the ocean off northern Spain. And I think it's good to pause for a second and realize we're not talking about crude oil here. We're not talking about refined oil. We're not talking about natural gas. We're talking about bitumen that just cloys and digs this deeper and deeper into where it lands. It makes the, the, the Exxon Valdez look like child's play. They still haven't cleaned that up. If there is a spill of bitumen in your waters, never until the end of time will it ever be cleaned up. We have to understand that. There is going to come a time when all British Columbians are going to have to put up or shut up. And I'm here to tell you now, and I've said this before publicly, and I'll say it again now. When that first bulldozer appears, 
I'll be there. And I'm going to urge everybody in British Columbia to be there.